invisible learning based on the work of John Hattie, a researcher out of Australia, in which he did thousands and thousands of studies with thousands of kids across the world, really helping us to understand more about taking teaching from good teaching to great teaching. What is it that we've been doing that's making a difference, but how can we make even more impact? So we want to do the things in classrooms that have the most impact. And so when he put together this research and did what's called a meta-analysis of all of the research, he found that some of the things we do have 0.4 or higher impact. What does that mean? That means 0.4 tells you that strategy, if implemented properly, has the potential to make one year's growth with a child. So here's what I want to do. I want to look at your I can statements. I want to make sure that you are caught up with these for chapter two, because uh, Monday, I do believe we will get chapter three. So in Hattie's work, he shows things that have what is known as a high effect size, things that have greater impact on learning than other things. Students, by nature of just being in school, will learn. Students having relationships with teachers will improve that learning for them. But it's about the strategies that the teachers use in the learning process. So what is the data telling us that will have the highest impact? Open that. Okay, that way your whole table can see if they need to. And at the beginning of the year, Ms. Matthew explained to us that this is really fast. And if you, we have to be able to keep up with it. If we don't understand something, we need to make sure we ask someone so they, so we can like keep moving because we're always moving. <laughs> we all have that mindset to like um, strive for the best that we can be in math and in all of our other subjects. For example, as a district, we've been working on accountable talk. What do you mean? Good. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it would. So yeah. one would be times 10 and be times eight. Which is really about student to student discourse, students having conversations with one another to expand on their thinking as learners. That has a very high impact strategy. So we're looking at how do we make that more effective in our classrooms. We can be more who we want to be and we're still getting work done and we still get to talk with our friends while we're getting our work done. It's me, Bobby, and Hannah and we all usually work collaboratively to discuss our answers and um no we don't really have like assigned jobs like we all really just like work together like talk about our answers and um make sure we all understand and if we don't understand then we explain it to one another so and there's not really like a scribe or whatever or like a like a chatty person but um but we just all work together. The people at my table, we collaborate well together because we each know a different part of the standard so we could explain it to each other. One person is Jordan Wager. She's really good with calculators and mental math. Devin Brown is really good at writing everything out. And Sage, he, is, he keeps all the notes to look back on. I think we were working on a big ideas lesson and we all like were already friends from before so it was really easy and like it was really easy to work together and uh, they're both smart people so they could help me with stuff that I didn't understand. Making students learning visible is all that we're doing with Accountable Talk. How do we know children get it? One of the strategies is we listen to their conversation with their peers. I got 104 to say. Oh, I think it's 115 times 4. Yeah. Yeah. 104 and then 60. Squared. When all of us, teachers, administrators, district staff, when we come together and we believe that together, we can employ strategies that help children learn when we know we're not going to give up. That has an impact of 1.57 and it's called collective efficacy, my very favorite strategy.
So the training that we just had, the learning intentions and success criteria training, was really just for administrators. We had high school principals and assistant principals in elementary, assistant principals and middle school principals and assistant principals in the room. And the purpose of that was to solidify a common language across grades K through 12. It was to make sure that our instructional leaders at the administrative level are able to go back to their schools and support all levels of teachers. The fabulous part of the visible learning work is it does benefit everybody. It benefits a district in terms of trying to set direction that will best support the growth and achievement of all of our students. It helps building leaders identify a common focus. We have deliberate practice that we're offering for our teachers. For teachers, your pedagogy is going to strengthen and then obviously our learners are going to benefit from all of that. So our teachers are used to putting standards on the board, they're used to making agendas and putting them on the board. But this really gets down to that specificity of what I'm learning today, why I'm learning it, and how I'm going to know if I was successful. So again, it's not about the teacher knowing, it's about the student knowing. Well, you saw how we, um, how we like show what we're learning, like with like writing and like the pictures that we're doing. And so like that's like an everyday thing for us. And so it's like not like we have to even like add it on to what we're doing. It's like always there. So we're just, um, we always like we always like work it out step by step so we can it's it's kind of like showing your work in a way so you know like so the teacher and you can see what you're learning i started with the you'll know you've got it when and give them some concrete examples of how how do i know that i've got it at the end of the day um, and sometimes i'll use those as exit tickets like i did today um, sometimes we'll do it on the ti again it really just depends i kind of alter it up Uh, that was like a help ticket for Miss Matu to understand what we to understand what we understand and what she needs to help us with and what she doesn't need us to what she doesn't need to help us with. Exit tickets are a great thing for our teachers to use because at the end it says, so this is what I wanted you to learn today. You tell me what you've learned and that then helps the teacher to know tomorrow. I need to go back and reteach four of our, my students who didn't quite get it today, four others who are in a different place, and then I move forward from there. We should have your diagnostic scores from this second round, so you can see here's what I did by the end of fifth grade, here's where I was at the beginning of sixth grade, now here's where I am in the middle of sixth grade. You know, your scores should have increased. So one of the things that I would say to the public about this is that this is a demonstration that we are lifelong learners. Whether we are administrators in the classroom, teachers in the classroom, we are constantly involved in learning and reflecting on our practice, making constant changes to our practice. And the bottom line is all of these things are with the student in mind. How do we impact that student so that the student learns to the best of their ability and can go on to college or their career and be the most effective they can be? Thank you.